to this introduction to the Jelly Arts Jelly Printing Plate. Let's start with some samples. Uh, I want to run through uh, a few that I've made um, while I've been working on my journal pages or just randomly creating the backgrounds. These are just mono printed onto cardstock and I will just cut them later and use them in a different project. But there's a lot of different things that you can do with the plate. Um, this is actually a combination of some spray ink that I used over the top of some of the uh, backgrounds I created with the jelly plate. And I have found that they print, it prints differently depending on pap the paper that you use. I've done some on paper that has gesso and then some on paper that doesn't have gesso. Um, more watercolor paper and cardstock, it all varies. And I've just found that um, they turn out differently depending on what you're using. So. Uh, so let's talk about the jelly plate itself and give you a little information about it. The um, jelly plate is designed to create uh, mono prints and it is really kind of cool. It feels really, really neat. Uh, it comes in a, in a plastic package and then there's these uh, plastic covers that are on it on the front and on the back on both sides. So you would peel off this plastic and then you would want to work with it on a surface that is non-porous. So you want to find a surface like a, maybe a Teflon baking sheet or um, a piece of glass. I have found that it's inexpensive to just use freezer paper. And so I just place it onto a piece of freezer paper. I've also used it on a Tyvek envelope. Uh, so it's really your choice. That the Tyvek envelope is not porous and it doesn't seem to absorb uh, at all. So I really like the, um, either of those two as your options. Now this is the small size. Uh, it comes in two sizes. Um, this one I think is seven by seven or six, I think it might be six by six. Uh, let's see. Yeah, this one's six by six. And then there's another plate that is larger, and I think this one is eight by 10. So I, I have found that I, I use this one a little bit more just because I'm able to, you know, completely cover these large surfaces. But, you know, either way, they both work exactly the same. And, um, they're very easy to clean as you're working, and you'll see as I work my process for cleaning. You can use uh, baby wipes to clean the surface in between your inks, or, or your paint rather, or you can use a spray bottle of water, I like to have a spray bottle of water nearby, and then I just spray it and just wipe it off with a cloth. Um, I like to use um, cotton mus um, muslin, that way I can wipe it off and then the paint ends up on my fabric, which I love because then I can use it later for something else. And, um, but anyway, so there's just a few different tips as we go. I'll kind of share some other ideas with you of some things that I use. Now I use acrylic paints and what's really nice is you can use up those really inexpensive craft paints that you have, uh, which is awesome because we probably all have some of those. And actually the ones that stay wet the longest, which these tend to because they have more water in them, are actually the better ones to use. And then you'll need a brayer. And um, uh, just a, a brayer that you'll use to smooth the paint out onto your surface. Now, you it's not recommended that you use spray inks or dye inks. You can, but they can stain your plate. I have experimented with them, and I don't really like the way that they, they work. I, I prefer the, uh, the acrylic paints. I think they work a little bit better, so. Anyway, um, when you're done and you clean it up, you can wash it with some mild soap and water, rinse it, pat it dry, and then just put it back into the plastic that it came in. So it's very, very easy to take care of your jelly plate. My favorite stencil to use with the jelly plate is this uh, alphabet number stencil that I got. Um, you can get this at Michael's in the drafting section, but this is, I really like how this imprints. So for this one, I'm going to use two colors. You can use, I'll show you some samples where you can do one color, but it doesn't take a lot of paint, just a little bit. And I'm gonna mix two colors together. I like mixing colors, so you'll see how that turns out. And you just take your brayer and you just roll the brayer onto the surface. 
and you can cover the entire thing, uh, plate or you can just do a portion of it. All right, and then I'll take the brayer and then I'll run it onto that scrap paper I mentioned so that you can not waste your paint. I love saving all the paint. So what you're gonna do is lay the stencil down onto, I'm gonna lay it this way, onto your plate and then just press into it gently. It, it is a little rubbery, so it does move. So, And then I'm gonna lift that up. You can get a mono print of that and just place it on some other paper and then take your cardstock and you just place it or whatever you're mono printing to and then you just press this down and then you peel it off and then you end up with this really cool imprint and I like how it's got more than one color in it now this still has some ink on it so you technically you could still do another print so here's the second print, which doesn't have quite as much ink, but it's still picked up on some of it. So this would be a great base for another print to go on top of it. So we'll probably do that. So cleaning, again, I'm gonna spritz a little bit of water on there. This is my preferred method. And then I'm just gonna take my cloth and just wipe it. Um, the golden open acrylics, which take a long time to dry, or much longer than regular, they work very well on this uh, jelly plate. So, for this one, let's do, let's do a stencil that we're going to actually leave on. Let's do this one. And so I'm going to place the stencil again onto the plate. And for this one, we're going to leave the stencil on the plate. And I'm going to place my cardstock or my paper, whatever you're using. And so for this one, it's very different how it turns out because you're actually getting picking up the ink between the open areas of the stencil. So let's set that one aside. And then let me show you. Depending on how much ink is on there, you can actually get another print of that. So I'll put another piece down. And it looks very different. So you can see this uh, very different print. So again, brayer your color on. I'm going to place our stencil down. Now I want to do the, on this particular print, I want to take a print first and let's do it on this one. Let's do the opposite. For this one, we're going to take this print and put it on here. Now I'm going to peel this off and now we're going to do the print onto this one. And this is my favorite print actually. Um, and so now we're starting to get some pretty good layers going here. Now you can still see some of the other peeking through. Okay, this is actually a paper doily. You can use just about anything for these um, prints. They do not have to be, um, they don't all have to be stencils. All right, so let's pick a paint color. I'm gonna use this blue. I'm gonna put the stencil down a little ways because I want some of that to come through. creates a nice pattern in there and I love how it creates that squared off part there and then you can go in here and do something else so we'll we'll think about that and actually you know while we have it let's just see what this looks like doing it this way maybe just do part of this that's part of the fun of working with this plate is just saying well, what if I did this what if I try that and you just don't really know what you're gonna get and so we have a hint of that stencil in here and then still a little bit there. And I actually really like that. It might make a great background for a journal page. Now let's come back to this particular print that we did. So I really like this, but what if I wanted only portions of this background to show through? How, how might I achieve that? Well, here's one way to do it. 
I'm going to cover the entire plate. And then I've taken and cut shapes from just paper, cardstock, whatever. You can do any kind of shape that you want. And I'm just going to place these into my plate randomly. Okay, now we're going to place the print onto the plate. And once again, gently rub the back. So what you're going to have is when you lift this, the white is going to show up everywhere there's not a circle. But what's going to happen is, is when you peel this back, you will then have the image peeking out from those from that spot where I said, hey, I really like to see just that showing through. You'll still have a faint bit of the paint coming through, but now it really stands out. So there's another way that you can do a mono print with the plate. All right, so let's place our mask onto the plate. And there's gonna be obviously two ways to get a print from this. The first one is gonna to be to put the cardstock right onto the plate as it is. And then you end up with everywhere the stencil or the, the mask was not is where you'll have your paint. So now when we peel it off, we're going to try this print. And actually, this is my favorite print of the two. It's this one. And then you get this, which I like because you get a lot of, it, it kind of looks like a woodcut. I like that. And if I'd done a little less paint, I probably would have had a more white space in there. But it still looks really cool. All right, so we're gonna put our stencil down. And these stencils are awesome with this because they're so big. And then I'm just gonna start with a fresh piece of cardstock. And so now this will be the reverse of where we use these. Um, now it will pick up the circles. Much like the, um, the chevron stencil that we used, but this one I love because we get some awesome circles out of it. And so we have a really nice background to start with. And I love, again, using multiple colors. Okay, so now again, we lift this up. And I actually pressed a little bit hard on that. And there's actually probably more paint than I needed. But that's all right. So I don't see a... Let's just use a fresh piece here. A clean piece. See, I love the second print, you know, when you take, and look at, there was a little bit of paint still on there, so you, that picked it up. I really like this one, There's, and even that extra ink that was on there created some really cool effects. Okay, the other thing that you can do is you can take a tool, let's just take a, I don't know, the end of a brush and you can actually create designs in this yourself. You can just, you know, write or doodle or whatever you want to do. And then print. And so you can create your own designs as well in the printing of that. Okay, now something else that you can do is to take your stencil, and this will be a little bit different than what we did earlier. I'm gonna actually gently run this just to press it in there. Gently, and then lift it. And then do our print. It gives you the hint of it more like a, a shadow. You know, it reminds me of a photocopy, but I like that. This looks really cool. All right, so there's another idea. So what do you do with all the prints? Well, I take most of my prints and I layer them until I'm happy with them. And then I will create journal pages with them. Most of them will turn into backgrounds for journal pages. Um, and then some I will uh, probably cut and use in collage. 
on the journal pages. Um, I will create mail art with them. And sometimes um, you may just need a little piece of something to write a note on to somebody. What a great way to do that. Insert it into your letter or whatever. Leave a note for your husband or your kids or whatever. Just use it for little note cards or whatever instead of post-it notes. So there's definitely some options here on some different things that you can do with them. And then like I said, the ones that are my favorites will probably end up as backgrounds for journal pages. So anyway, if you have any questions, let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And again, thanks for watching.